What does the German government and the West see as the end game here? How does this conflict end? With liberty and peace in Ukraine. And we will support Ukraine as long as it takes. Because if Putin were to win this war, what sign would that be for other dictators in the world? Like Xi, like the Chinese president. So therefore, Ukraine has to win this war. Freedom and democracy have to win. And we will stand with Ukraine as long as it takes. This is my video update from Larnica, Cyprus on this Saturday, midday, September the 16th. Let's talk about some news and let's start things off with Annalena Baerbach going on Fox News and the German foreign minister saying that Xi Jinping is a dictator. <laughs> He is a dictator. Annalena said that uh, the collective West has to defeat Putin in Ukraine because if they do not defeat Putin in Ukraine, then who knows what dictators like Xi Jinping might do. So that was uh, Annalena Baerbach. Annalena 560, as she is now called. And uh, this mocking of, uh, of China and of Xi Jinping follows uh, Ursula van der Crazy's State of the European Union speech where she declared war on uh, Chinese automobile makers. So uh, <laughs> it's not going too well for the European Union, Germany, and relations with China. It looks like they're trying to pick a fight with China in the, uh, in the video of Annalena Baerbach. You can see that she's, she's very concentrated on uh, reading her script, reading her lines as she's answering the Fox News host's question about Ukraine. And, uh, and then she pivots to, to China. What, what the conflict in Ukraine between Russia and Ukraine has to do with, uh, with China and calling Xi Jinping a dictator. I, I still don't quite understand how she goes from China to Ukraine to, uh, to mocking, uh, from Russia and Ukraine to mocking uh, Xi Jinping. I don't, I don't know why she had to go there, but she went there. So it looks like to me, she's uh, picking a fight. And at first, when I saw this video, I thought this has to be some sort of deep fake because no one is that stupid to answer a question about Russia and Ukraine and then suddenly blurt out that uh, Xi Jinping is a dictator. You have to be really, really dumb to make that kind of, uh, of a pivot in your answer, but leave it to Annalena to be that, that dumb. <laughs> Boy, this is not gonna end well for the European Union. It's not gonna end, end well at all, picking a fight. With, uh, with China, but that seems to be where they are going. They seem to have gotten the orders from their, uh, their masters in uh, the US deep state, I imagine, the neocons. They've given the, uh, the Greens in Germany and Ursula at the European Union, they've given them the, the order to start picking a fight with China, and that appears to be exactly what they are doing, you know? Um, two, two, three years ago, we were introduced to Annalena Baerbach. She entered the German government and we were all, we were all introduced to the Green Party foreign minister of Germany. And that was the, that was the first version of Annalena Baerbach. And I thought nothing of it. I said, okay, she seems to be very inexperienced in foreign policy and in politics, but you know, let's see what uh, happens. Let's see what plays out. And then as the special military operation uh, got underway, and actually a couple of months before the SMO at the Munich uh, Security Conference, and, and then the SMO started up, we, uh, we got our first look at the Annalena three series, the Annalena 360 model, and uh, that model was, was, is quite entertaining, uh, quite dangerous, 
but also quite entertaining, dangerous for Germany, entertaining for, for us to, to listen to. The Annalena 360 model, the 3 Series Annalena bear box said a lot of, uh, a lot of crazy stuff, a lot of ridiculous things, uh, a lot of bad things for, uh, for Germany. And uh, the 3 Series model, uh, the, three, the 3 Series model did a lot of damage for, uh, for the nation of Germany and for the German economy. So it was a pretty, pretty effective uh, Annalena 360 model. And I thought we would stay at the 360 uh, model and the 3 Series, but all of a sudden, a week or two ago, uh, Germany and the Green Party, they launched the Annalena 5 series and they introduced us to Annalena 560, the 560 model. And boy, the 560 model does not <laughs> disappoint. Uh, it's, it's saying all the, all, the, all the dumb and ridiculous stuff that the 3 series would say, but I mean, it just ramps it up a whole lot more. More dumb, more stupid more damaging to the, uh, to the German economy and to the, to the country, to the nation of Germany. So the, uh, the 560 is everything that the 360 was, but just a lot more, a lot more crazy, a lot more ridiculous, a lot more damaging for, for uh, Germany. And uh, I have to admit, I'm pretty excited to, uh, to see what, what the next model of Annalena Baerbach will be. The uh, maybe the seven, the seven series, the seven sixty. I'm very interested to see that model. I imagine it's going to have everything that that the three and the five series uh, have, but it's going to probably just ramp it up to to just a next level. You're going to probably have all of the all of the craziness and, and stupidity, but uh, it's going to probably be packaged in uh, in a lot more uh, in a lot more comfortable way. So maybe uh, we'll be a lot more comfortable a lot more at ease with the 7 Series, listening to everything that Annalena says will probably, uh, probably be a lot more comfortable as we, as we laugh along with the, with the Annalena 7 Series. I imagine it's going to have a lot more torque and horsepower to, to, the, uh, to the degree of, of stupidity of her statements. I imagine you're going to see a lot more oomph, a lot more power uh, to, to, her, uh, to her ridiculous comments. And uh, it's going to probably be in a package that's, that's very smooth and very comfortable for all of us to, to behold. Anyway, that, that, is, that is the latest from Annalena 560. And we all await Annalena 760. We are waiting for the 7 Series model. So uh, let's talk about the, the EU grain embargo which I think was, was lifted uh, yesterday. It came to an end. The EU put, put a stop to Ukraine grain that was entering the European Union because Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, and I believe even Greece, they did not want the cheap Ukraine grain dumped in, uh, in their markets. And so the EU had to put an embargo on the grain and yesterday it looks like that embargo ended and the eu said that they're not going to uh they're not going to put the embargo back in place they're going to allow ukraine grain to enter the european union now the grain from ukraine which there are various reports which claim that it's not the best quality of, of grain, but uh, the grain from Ukraine is, uh, is very cheap and was initially meant to, to go to the poorest nations of the world that need it the most, but instead it was just being siphoned off by the European Union so that they can suppress food prices which were going up because of the EU sanctions placed on Russia. And so they were taking most of the grain and they were hoarding it and not allowing the grain to reach the countries that need it most. Actually, Viktor Orban, in a statement he gave the other day, said as much. He said that the whole grain uh, scheme 
was a complete lie and the grain was not going to the countries that need it most and it was being um, it was being uh, taken by the European Union. They were the ones that were hoarding all the grain. And he said the whole thing was just a sham and the grain was uh, entering Hungary and it was cheap and it was screwing up the, the local Hungarian market. And he said the whole thing was just, was just fiction, the whole grain controversy. The EU was lying about the, uh, the grain deal from Ukraine. And that is why Hungary has decided to unilaterally place an embargo on the, uh, the grain that is entering the European Union. The, the embargo has been lifted by the EU, but Hungary has come out with a statement and they said that they will keep the restrictions in place. And Poland has joined Hungary in placing restrictions on Ukraine grain. Hungary has, uh, Poland has an election in a little less than one month and they are going to keep the ukraine grain embargo in place and slovakia has done the same slovakia has joined hungary and poland and they have decided to keep restrictions on ukraine grain in place i believe slovakia also has an election at the end of the month and i imagine that romania and maybe Greece will join Poland, Hungary, and Slovakia in banning the cheap Ukraine grain from entering their markets. I read that Bulgaria is actually, Bulgaria at first restricted the Ukraine grain, and now that the embargo has been lifted by, has been lifted by the European Union, I am hearing reports which claim that Bulgaria is going to allow the Ukraine grain to enter Bulgaria. So it looks like Bulgaria is the one country out of the first countries that put the restriction that will allow the grain to enter the Bulgarian markets. So let's cross here. So that is an update with the, the whole grain story. And uh, Ukraine said that they're going to take Poland, by the way. They said they're going to take Poland, and I imagine Hungary and Slovakia, they're going to take them to court arbitration because they say that what they are doing is, uh, is breaking uh, international trade. Right? It's breaking the law, breaking international trade, I believe is what Ukraine says. So they're going to take Poland to court, to arbitration, to get Poland to accept the cheap and from what I understand, the very unhealthy Ukraine grain, which was meant for the poor nations, but the, uh, the masks are off and we understand that the grain is being dumped in the European Union. It was never intended to go to the poor nations. That was never the purpose of the grain. The grain was meant to go to the EU to keep prices low and then to get money into the pockets of the Alensky regime and uh, get that money to Alensky and his cronies. That was the, the purpose of the grain deal. So Putin, he met with Lukashenko the other day from Belarus, the president of Belarus, and uh, they said some very interesting things. You see that rock structure all the way down there? What is that rock structure? It's like rocks piled on top of rocks, piled on top of rocks. We need to go out there and have a look. It might be some sort of alien, alien rock formation. We're gonna have to check that out. Maybe at the end of the video, check it out. We had the aliens in Mexico, those like ET-like aliens. They, uh, they popped up in Mexico, so maybe the aliens They've uh, created a rock, a rock structure here in Larnica. Maybe they landed here and they piled the rocks one on top of the other down there. We're gonna have to take a closer look, everybody. Yeah, we're gonna have to take a closer look. So uh, Putin met with uh, Lukashenko. They uh, they talked about the uh, the conflict in Ukraine, of course. And uh, by the way, the UK, they have, uh, they have designated Wagner as 
uh, a terrorist group. So that's official now. Um, why they why they went through the trouble of saying Wagner is a terrorist group? I don't understand why because. Wagner pretty much doesn't really exist anymore, so they went through the trouble of saying Wagner is a terrorist group when at this point in time it looks like Wagner has been completely dissolved. But anyway, they've, uh, they've designated Wagner a terrorist group. I think they're doing this so they can go after uh, more people in the UK that's like more sites or uh, telegram channels or people that they think uh, were associated with Wagner. It's just another way of, of sanctioning or imprisoning or, or going after people that UK government claims were were supporting Wagner. That's why they they designated them a terrorist group because there was, there's really no purpose in dealing with Wagner anymore because Wagner is is uh, pretty much non-existent. They've been folded into the Russian military, but uh, they did discuss mercenaries because Lukashenko he told Putin that uh, the collective West is pretty much using all mercenaries at this point in time to, uh, to fight the conflict in Ukraine. And he told Putin that Poland has amassed a whole bunch of troops at the border with the West of Ukraine, and they're just itching to, uh, to get in. They really, really want to enter the West of Ukraine. That is what Lukashenko told Putin, and Putin actually replied to Lukashenko by saying it's interesting that, that Ukraine is using uh, mercenaries to fight this conflict, and he said that Russia doesn't need to use mercenaries because Putin said that Russia has 300,000. At this point in time, they have 300,000 uh, contracted soldiers that have uh, signed up, just like in the last few months. 300,000 is the number that Putin is putting it at. I think Shoiku, the Minister of Defense, just two, three weeks ago, or was it Medvedev, like two, three weeks ago, said that Russia has had something like 280,000 um, men volunteer to, to join the military contract, professional soldiers, and Putin now has that number at 300,000. So the Financial Times, they put out an article and they explained why the uh, the big super duper counter offensive has failed? And the Financial Times claims that the big counter offensive failed because the Ukraine troops were not trained properly. They just didn't have enough time to train. The training wasn't effective. The Ukraine military that was trained by the Collective West they never got a handle on uh, how to fight using combined uh, arms. And they fell back onto a war of attrition. And the Financial Times said that in the first couple of weeks of the conflict, the Ukraine military lost so many men and so much uh, of the NATO weaponry that they just didn't have a choice other than to, uh, to skip all the training that they went through, all of the combined arms training to just forget about it and go back into attrition warfare. So that is what the Financial Times said was the reason for Ukraine failing in this big counteroffensive. And make no mistake about it, the Financial Times comes out and says that the counteroffensive is failing, which means that it's failed. And uh, Brian Berletic has said it, Alexander has said it, I've said it, and a whole bunch of other um, analysts who have been following this conflict have said it multiple times. Scott Ritter said it, Andrei Martianov, uh, everybody has come out and said that that trying to train Ukraine in combined arms warfare, NATO style, in a matter of four to six to eight weeks is, is laughable. It's ridiculous. But they did it anyway. And uh, they spent a whole lot of money and time and effort. And they put out a whole lot of propaganda for, uh, for the training of the Ukraine military that was taking place in the UK, in Sweden, in the Netherlands, all over Europe, in France. We were fed story after story about how 10,000 Ukraine troops were being uh, trained, 20,000 Ukraine troops, and 30,000 Ukraine troops. And Burrell said that 40,000 Ukraine troops are being trained, and these troops are going to break through the Russian defenses, split the Russian forces in two in the south, and uh, 
might lead to the uh, the downfall of the Russian military, to the collapse of the Russian military, and absolutely none of that has happened. The UK Ministry of Defense, at one point in time, they actually claimed that uh, the big super duper counteroffensive was failing because of uh, of the foliage, because of, of the trees and, and the leaves and the foliage. It was impairing the Ukraine military from uh, from pushing forward. But now we have the Financial Times pretty much coming clean and saying it's failed. The combined arms war warfare was a bad idea. The training was not good. The time was not enough. And this thing is is over stick a fork in it it's over meanwhile you have the wall street journal coming out with an article saying that uh, the biden white house will indeed provide attackums to uh, to the alensky regime but the attackums will come sometime in the fall and the biden white house will not announce the provisioning of attackums to the ukraine military in this upcoming trip from uh, from Alensky to the United States. They're not going to announce the attackums, but the Wall Street Journal is saying that the attackums are coming. They're going to be given to the Ukraine military, but they're going to be given by the fall, which means if they say the fall, that's when the attackums are going to start being sent to uh, Ukraine. That means that the attackums are already on their way or in Ukraine. If they say the fall, it means a month or two earlier. They've already been approved and either in Ukraine right now or they are on the move towards Ukraine. So that is what the Wall Street Journal is reporting. And Reuters, Reuters put out a story which uh, says that the United States is going to ramp up its production of 155 mm ammo to 100,000 per month. 100,000 per month, over a million per year, is what the United States production of 155 mm is going to, to get to. But, but it is going to take two years to get to that point. Reuters says by 2025, the U.S. will get to 100,000 per month. Right now, I think it said the United States manufactures something like 20, 26 or 28,000. 155 mm per per month and it's going to take two years to get to a hundred thousand per month a million per year uh the russian military the russian federation at this point in time it uh it pumps out it manufactures two point i think 2.5 million per year of 155 mm and many people say that this is a low number. They say that Russia is lowballing it and they manufacture a whole lot more. And that's what they're manufacturing. That's what they're putting out right now. That's what they're producing at this moment in time. So if the US in two years gets to a million, where will Russia be in two years? If they're putting out 2 million or 2.5 or 3 million, where will they be in two years? 5 million? Six million. You see how this uh, this conflict cannot be won by the collective West, and that's in two years. A lot of things can happen. A lot of things can change in two years. But that is what Reuters is reporting. All of these stories coming out, I think, are for uh, for the upcoming Alensky trip to uh, to the United States to provide some hope to uh, to the Alensky regime and to try and push Congress to approve the $24 billion in, uh, in money that's going to be given to Alensky. Because you have a lot of Republicans that are saying the money is, is a waste. It's a waste of $24 billion, but is it going to be enough to block the $24 billion, the approval from, uh, from Congress of the $24 billion? Many people say that the uh, the Republicans that are against the 24 billion is not enough to actually block the uh, the money from being approved. But we'll see when Alensky, when Alensky gets to the United States. And let's do a couple of more stories, and uh, and then maybe we'll go out to the Alien Rock Formation. See see what that's all about.
is not very curious. So uh, we had uh, floods in Libya, horrible, terrible floods in Libya. A lot of people have, uh, have died, a lot of damage from, uh, from these floods. And we actually have, this is pretty incredible, we actually have Barack Obama coming out with a tweet talking about the, uh, the, ca- the catastrophe in Libya from these floods. Barack Obama put out this tweet. If you're looking to help people impacted by the floods in Libya, check out these organizations providing relief. And underneath this tweet, he has the Obama Foundation as the organization. In other words, donate money to the Obama Foundation, which claims that they're going to be helping the... Uh, people of Libya deal with these floods. And underneath Obama's tweet, we have a tweet from the Twitter account of Yeroman, which says, your gang destroyed Libya. Better you just shut up now. (laughs) That's exactly right. You know, the United Nations, they also uh, put out a statement connected to, to the floods in Libya. And see if I have it here. And the United Nations said that uh, the flooding, the devastation from the floods could have been prevented if Libya had a better warning system in place. That's what the United Nations said. The emergency management authorities would have been able to carry out evacuation of the people and we could have avoided most of the human casualty casualties. Daddy Talas, the Secretary General of WMO, told her in Geneva. You know, no one wants to say that these floods and the devastation of Libyan infrastructure, which has caused so many deaths from these floods, was the handiwork of one Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. And then Barack Obama actually puts out a tweet and tells people to donate money to his foundation, the man that destroyed Libya. Pretty soon the Clinton Foundation is going to come out with a tweet, with a statement saying, donate to the Clinton Foundation to, uh, to help the people of Libya. These are the people that destroyed Libya's infrastructure. And if Libya had the infrastructure in place, I was reading an article which said that if Libya had the infrastructure in place that it used to have under Gaddafi, the uh, the flooding would have been uh, prevented. Most of the damage of the flooding would have been prevented because they would have had the infrastructure in place to to prevent the devastation, to prevent the floods from from uh, doing the damage that they did. But the Obama administration and Hillary Clinton, well, they destroyed. Libya's infrastructure, and Libya's been pretty much a failed state ever since Barack Obama. It's, it's incredible that Obama actually comes out and tells people to donate to his foundation to help the people of Libya. Anyway, let's do a clown world. How are we doing on time here? We're doing all right. Let's do a clown world, and let's make our way over. Let's investigate the alien rock formation. I hope I can get all the way out there without without having problems with my phone (laughs) in the water here. Let's see if I can walk all the way out there. We'll see how close I can get. And uh, let's do a clown world as we're walking. So the clown world has to do with none other than Joe Bidenopoulos. Greece is favorite son, Joe Biden, speaking to, to the crowd. Yesterday, I'm not sure what the event was, but uh, Joe Biden, he said that he used to teach at the University of Pennsylvania, the Ivy League school known as UPenn. He used to be a professor there. (laughs) He used to teach a course, he said. That was Biden. And uh, everyone decided to fact check Joe Biden and the fact checkers they found out pretty quickly that Biden, yes, he was being paid 
by the University of Pennsylvania. $900,000 he made from the University of Pennsylvania. But he didn't teach one single course. Professor Biden never showed up to class. How's my bag? My bag's still there. I hope it's still there. My laptop's in that bag. <laughs> so let's hope no one takes it. Anyway, yeah, Biden. Professor Biden. <laughs> Can you imagine taking a class with Professor Biden? He didn't show up. Not one class. He didn't teach anything. But there he was saying that he was a professor. He's been a professor. He's been a truck driver. He's a... Uh, He's fought corn pop. <laughs> what else has Biden, has Biden lied about? He's lied about so many things. And his lies have nothing to do with, with his age. He's been lying for 50 years. I mean, he's got, he's got a problem. <laughs> he really does have a problem, Biden, when it comes to telling the truth. But yeah, Professor Biden, $900,000, close to a million dollars doing nothing. Doing absolutely nothing, not teaching one course. And he got a million bucks. Not bad, huh? <laughs> Not a bad gig. <laughs> don't teach. Don't even come to, uh, to the university. Just show up once or twice a year. And uh, we'll pay you a million bucks. I think we all know the scheme that, uh, that is taking place here. It's very much like the book deals. You know, they... They, uh, they give politicians these book deals after they leave office, which is kind of their, their payoff, sometimes even before they enter office. But no one reads these books. Um, these books don't sell. But uh, all of these politicians and these elites, they always get some sort of, you know, $1 million uh, upfront payment for the book, <laughs> even though it's going to sell like 10 copies. It's the same thing that's going on here at the University of... Uh, of Pennsylvania. They gave a million bucks to Biden because he's either for a job well done for the deep state or for something that he's uh, that he was about to do and that's the way they they pay him off by saying he's going to, to get the money from the university. Professor Biden. So I'm still, you can see here, I'm still walking the water very shallow here in Larnica. My bag is okay and we made it to the alien structure. We made it. Oh, now it's getting deep, the water. Let's see if I can zoom in here so everyone can see this alien structure. Aliens in Larnica, everyone. You're seeing it here first. Can we get closer? Now the water's getting deep. Now the water is getting deep. And there's rocks. We're gonna get to it. We're gonna make it. Here we are. Okay, look. There is no way, no way that this could have been done by human beings. Impossible. Human beings, they don't have the technology to stack rocks one on top of the other like this. So this had to have been some type of extraterrestrial. Maybe those aliens in Mexico, before they went to Mexico, they decided to come to Larnica. Maybe this is like a, a signal that they were going to Mexico. Maybe this is their calling card. I don't know. All right. Incredible, huh? Incredible technology that they're using to stack these rocks one on top of the other. I hope they're friendly, the aliens. I really hope they're friendly. All right, that is the video. TheDuran.Locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram. Where else? Rockfin and X. And go to the Duran shop, 10% off. Use the code, good day, take care.